Today we're going to talk about the Premier League's club from the northeast of England, that being Newcastle United. They're nicknamed the Magpies. They have a home kit of black and white stripes, this being the one from 2009-2010 when they were in the second tier of English football. Having returned to the Premier League in recent seasons, they've also been purchased by the Saudi Public Investment Fund, which means they have massive coffers once again to support the Toon Army, their supporters who are amongst the most passionate in English football. They were founded in 1892 as a merger of two clubs within the city of Newcastle, which sits along the River Tyne along the seaside. The badge itself takes a lot of elements from the coat of arms of the city, including along the sides here, you'll see two hippo camps. Think they're seahorses rather than actual, think mythical, as you'll see at the end of them, they have a mermaid's tail. They play at St. James Park, which is one of England's current odd looking stadiums, seeing as it's been rebuilt, renovated, sometimes against the wishes of locals, to the point that some of the stands, two of them, are very, very tall amongst the two older ones, which are relatively short. St. James Park is located right downtown in Newcastle, which means it's encroached by a lot of different buildings, old ones, things that can't be torn down in order to renovate the stands, change the stadium to looking more modern, or just build a whole new one. Who knows? But at this point, I think it's a grand old mess, and I like the way it looks. The thing is, there's only one set of people that probably don't like it, and that's away fans, seeing as they have to sit in the Lees stand in the very top level, which is almost astronomically far from the pitch, to the point you might bring binoculars to see anything going on, along with the fact that you're going to have to take 14 flights of stairs in order to get to your seat. Newcastle are one of England's most successful clubs as far as titles, but not in a very long while. They have won the league four times, but the latest one was in 1927, so they're coming up on 100 years without a league title, which in America might mean you equate them with the Chicago Cubs, but there's not really a curse with this club. They did have a successful period in the mid-90s under their manager and former player, Kevin Keegan, where they were runner-up in the league in 96 and 97. That's as close as they've come to league glory in a long time. They did win the Intertoto Cup, which is an older UEFA trophy back in 2006, so that's a European competition of note that they've won. That goes along with six FA Cups, with the latest one coming in 1955. They hold two important rivalries, with one much bigger than the other, that being the Tyne Weir Derby. It's against Sunderland, who are a city just 12 miles south of the city of Newcastle. Both cities are straddled across a river, Tyne and Weir. The last I looked, this rivalry is actually pretty split evenly down the middle. I'm pretty sure the two of them have an equal amount of victories. It hasn't been held in a while, seeing as both teams haven't been in the same division in a little bit, with Sunderland dropping down the pyramid in England. The other rivalry being with Middlesbrough. This one was a lot hotter in the late 90s, early 2000s, when Borough and Newcastle were the two teams from the Northeast in the Premier League. Sunderland had dropped out at that time. This one's called the Time Tees Derby. Tees being the river that splits Middlesbrough. So the mid-90s were a successful time for the club. 96 and 97, they finished runners-up in the league. They also went to the FA Cup final two times during the 90s, and they came very close to restoring a lot of the early century Jordy glory that the club had had. That being said, they also gave us the finest ever match of Premier League football. April 1996, they played Liverpool at Anfield. They lost 4-3, to three, but it was some of the best attacking football the league had ever displayed. This club at the time under Kevin Keegan had some of the best attacking talent that's ever been put on display in the league. At the time, both clubs were trying to hunt down Manchester United in the league title fight. United would end up winning the league, but only on the final day with Newcastle finishing second. Liverpool were surging at the time. Newcastle had stumbled a bit, so this was a big match. It's considered a classic. Go find a replay of the whole thing if you can. With that 90s period being the last time they were within touching distance of the top of English football, Many fans feel that now that they've been purchased by the Saudi Arabian Public Investment Fund, amongst two other conglomerates within a group of owners, many of their supporters think now is the time that they can go one step further. Any comment section on a post about Newcastle United these days is going to be a hot and fiery place, seeing as their ownership group is the contentious point for many people. That being said, let's take a look at legacy for this club first with former players. You almost always have to start with Alan Shearer for this club, seeing as he's the all-time goal scorer for the club, and for the Premier League. With Harry Kane having moved out of the league to Bayern Munich just a couple days ago, that record looks to be safe for a long, long time from now. The second name to lay down is Peter Beardsley. He was a forward for the club in the 80s and the 90s. In the early 80s, he made a great strike partnership for just a season with Kevin Keegan, who I mentioned before. He did that again as another good striking partnership with Andy Cole, who was at the club in the 90s before moving to Manchester United. He had a season at the club where he scored 41 goals alongside Beardsley. Last name to lay down just for interest is Paul Gascoigne started at this club before he moved on to Tottenham Hotspur, being sold by United in 1988. 
With the amount of money that they have at hand to build their current squad, Newcastle have been actually quite shrewd in the market, where Chelsea FC have been absolute maniacs in the amount of money that they're spending without qualified talent coming in that you know is going to be good right away. Newcastle have actually been very good in signing many players, with the best so far being Sandro Tonali, a deep-lying playmaking midfielder from AC Milan that they brought in this season. He's probably Italy's finest regista of this generation, and he's going to be a great impact player for this club as they move into their next era. They sit him in midfield alongside Bruno Gamarish a little bit further up to be the more of a creative tacking spark in the final third. He was their first, if not second, signing, I believe, under their new ownership. On top of that, Front and center is Alexander Isak, the Swedish striker who's probably their best talent since Latan Ibrahimovic. Behind him, they've made a good purchase with Harvey Barnes this offseason, and they're building out a squad that has young but qualified talent that can lead them forward. So I hope you enjoyed this one about Newcastle United, learning just a couple quick first things about the club.